Oh, hey guys, it's Jordi here from Cinecam.net and welcome back to Copycat Friday. And I think at this point we've all seen one of the videos from Macro Room passing by. I mean, it went pretty viral and that's because what Ben makes, the guy behind the channel, is so incredible. He makes a combination of super slow motion together with real-time footage and he does some really awesome video magic with that. He kind of reminds me of Zack King in a way, I don't know. But that is what we're going to recreate today, guys. We're going to drop a cookie into a mug full of milk and uh well what you see right now that's what we're going to recreate so uh let's get started and show you guys how it's done Okay, we had this cool idea that we want to recreate and now it's time to test some stuff. And the thing we needed to test is the slow motion. We need to find out how far we can go with the red and with other cameras that we have laying around here. So yeah, it's just some slow motion testing and then we can shoot the real sketch. The ideal camera for this effect would of course be a high-speed camera, but not everyone has them laying around or has the budget for them. For the first experiment we recorded as slow as possible with the RED camera, which is 240 frames per second at a resolution of 2K. With this I want to see how achievable it is to increase the frame rate without actually shooting more frames. So I brought the clip in After Effects. Here I used the trial version of the Twixer plugin, which is basically a plugin which will make your footage higher frame rate. It works by analyzing your footage and guessing how the missing frame should look like. And honestly it looks pretty well. Of course you can see some artifacts, but that depends on how you actually shoot your footage. But the downside could be that the plugin does cost some money. For the second method, I used a smartphone. I know, sounds weird, right? These days you have some smartphones like the Samsung Galaxy S21, which can shoot up to a frame rate of 960 FPS. Of course, you'll have to sacrifice the resolution, which in this case is 720p. Yikes. To fix this issue, I use a software called Topaz AI, which basically scales up your footage. <laughs> Bless you. If you look at the result and compare the two footages, you can indeed see it got a bit better, but of course it doesn't compare to a real camera. But depending on the goal of your video, you could get away with it. In our case, we'll just stick with the 2K 240 frames a second because it should be good enough for us to shoot our video. What are the guys doing right here? Hey Timo. Yes, uh, offline. I'm so good at Instagram stories. Janik bought the triple chocolate. Now do like the real vloggers. And that's because they have autofocus. Yeah, but I also have autofocus now. Before we can start shooting, we first need a photograph of the cookie falling in the milk and the cup. Because in the sketch you will see Lorenzo dropping the cookie, taking a picture of it and then showing the picture. But you can't do this all at once because you can't move time and slow-mo all at the same time. So we're gonna take the photo before we do the sketch and then we can show it in the sketch. Easy as that. We tried to take the picture with the iPhone but as you can see the shutter speed is not high enough so we're gonna switch to our DSLR. I like DSLR. SLR. Timo, I have a mushy cookie. This is not an easy task. For this effect you'll need two shots. The first one is where you drop the cookie in an empty mug, pretend to take a picture of the milk splashing out and show it back to the camera. After this you don't want to move anything, not the camera, the lights, the mug, nothing, because that will mess up your effect. Then you fill the mug with milk and drop the cookie from a great height and make sure you create a nice big splash. Of course shoot everything on a tripod because that will make your life way easier in the editing room. Thanks for the tip. And something else that can make your life way easier is Storyblocks, our sponsor for today's video. If you don't have a camera or a smartphone that can shoot slow enough, you can always scroll through their huge stock library. There, for example, they already have a ton of slow motion clips in HD and 4K resolution, so you can play around with time. And of course, this isn't the only thing they have. They also have green screen clips, lower thirds, animated backgrounds, and MoGraph templates like this one, for example, in Premiere Pro. I can just type in what I say and look at that. 
that. It just shows what I'm saying. Isn't that cool? And the best of all is that you only have to pay a single price per year to have unlimited downloads. So click the first link in the description down below for more information. So guys, for the tutorial, the next step that you want to do is stake out your scissor lift and hang above the table. Very important step. Now go take your scissor lift, guys. Apparently I wasn't straight above the uh, mug, so we didn't get a splash of milk. Cookie drop, take four, I guess. At first we had this light setup to light Lorenzo from one side with these soft boxes and with one fill light on the other side. And we also had a backlight behind him so we can make him come loose from the background. However, when he was moving his right arm, you can see him casting shadows on the cup. We removed the backlight and we lifted up the soft boxes on the side, creating more of a top lighting, which will make it easier for the shadows because they aren't casting on the cup anymore, but just on the table. And believe it or not, but we are going to use Premiere Pro for this effect. Ah, it's been a while. Of course, a normal person would use After Effects because we need to mask a lot of stuff and After Effects is so much better than masking. A lot better. But you know us, we like a challenge. Challenge accepted. Anyways, let's stop wasting time and do some editing magic. The first step is adding our main shot to a new composition. Now because we shot everything in slow motion, we first need to speed it up, back to a normal playback speed. We filmed in 240 frames per second and we want to work in 30 frames per second, so we need to speed up our clip 8 times to achieve the normal playback speed. But of course, this all depends on how many frames you shot in, so it can differ for everyone. Next up, we removed our cookie and for this we need a clean plate we don't have. So let's make one. We duplicated our main clip to track number 4. And yes, this needs to be track number 4. We need track number 2 and 3 for some other stuff. Now we look for the point where we just released the cookie. Here we made a cut and removed the clip left of that cut. Then we selected the clip right of the cut and nudge it to the left, offsetting it in time. We do this so that the duplicate cookie will be a few steps faster than the original cookie and this we will use as a clean plate. So we just created a mask on the duplicate layer which will cover up the cookie from the main clip. Of course we animated the mask so that it keeps following along with the cookie. And look at that, our cookie is gone. Well, the thing is that we still need a cookie, but we need it in slow motion. So we again duplicate our main clip on track number 5, made a cut on the point where we dropped our cookie and deleted everything left from the cut. Now for the slow motion, we are going to reset the speed of our clip. Once done, we do have to time remap the cookie, because we want a smooth transition between our normal speed cookie and the slow motion cookie. So we let it start from a normal speed and then gradually slow down over time. Next up, let's single out the cookie. First we select the slow motion cookie clip and nest that layer. Then we took the pen tool and started masking. Try to do this as precise as possible. Oh come on Premiere, I said precise. Yeah, this doesn't seem to be working. Sorry guys, but we'll need to do it in After Effects for this. Select the clip, right click on it and replace it with an After Effects composition. In After Effects we can then easily rotoscope our cookie out. Ah, so much easier and faster. Now that we have that, we can go back to Premiere Pro. And if everything went well, you should have a clip where everything plays at a normal speed, except our cookie that is dropping in slow motion. Okay, we're almost there, but we need to add our milk and slow motion splash. So we took the cookie milk drop clip and place it on track number 3. We then match the timing of the cookie dropping and the milk splash. On the milk clip we're going to create a match precisely around the cup. This way we always have the milk cup in our screen. But when we now play everything we can see that we have one frame where we can see a small portion of a dropping cookie and the shadow of it. But don't worry we can easily solve this. We just duplicate our main clip to the video track number 2. Nudge it one frame to the right and add a frame hold. We then make the clip one frame long and mask out a small part around the cup removing the cookie and the shadow. Then the last thing we need to add is the splash. We duplicated our milk splash to track number 6 and on the moment our cookie hits the milk we made a cut and removed everything left of the cut. We then created a mask around our cup and the table. 
this mask we animated over time to open up and follow along with the milk splash. You can do this really rough, because we are going to remove the black of our clip by adjusting the blending mode to lighten. One thing we did was adding a simple photo flash on the moment we wanted to take a picture. Because we shot everything in slow motion and our real flash was so fast it disappeared when we sped up the clip, we had to re-add it. But luckily, this was super easy. And that's it for the effect. This video made me hungry, guys. With all the cookies, I love cookies. And hope that you love the effect, guys, and learned something new today. I mean, that is something that I would love as well. Isn't this a lovely set right here with the lights hanging? Thank you, Storyblocks, for the love. Thank you for the love. Thank you, everyone, for the love. And as always, stay loving. You want me to say stay creative, right? Okay, stay creative, guys. Oh, <laughs> <laughs>